Hi, I'm Lee Teschler with Design World Magazine, and I'm here with Steve Sullivan from Rital, and we're about to tear apart a TS-8 modular cabinet. Now, back in the old days, when I was a young lad, we used to make cabinets that were just all welded together. We'd drill holes in them and mount stuff to them. Increasingly, that's not the way you do it anymore, and we're going to take a close look at how you really should be doing it. Steve, as I uh, mentioned, this is a modular cabinet. I'd kind of like to show exactly what that means. Can we take the door off and can we take the side panels off? Sure. How easy is that? Really easy. I'm going to show you. First, we'll take the double bit key. We'll unlock the cabinet. That's our opening mechanism. Now, to, to take the door off, really just need a flat blade screwdriver. And we have accessories for this, but this is the easiest thing that's laying around. What I like to do is just wedge, wedge into a gap and start to pry the hinge pins down and I leave the top one on so that it takes the weight. So I can work my way down and not have to worry about anything with the door. Last but not least. And then there's the door off. Pretty quick, pretty simple. One person job. That's awesome. What's the uh purpose of the rail and the door. This door frame is standard as well and what we do is we mount accessories to this. So this standard door will hold over 200 pounds. So a very heavy air conditioner or if we want to put document holders on there, uh, laptop stands, writing boards, even mounting DIN rail or different accessory rails to allow us to mount a lot of controls to the door. That's awesome. Well the door came off pretty quickly. What about the side panels? Okay. Side panels, what I'm going to use, they're sold as a pair. And what I'm going to use is a T30 to remove the fasteners. Now you'll notice with the panel, I don't have to worry about it falling over on me. This is designed to hold itself to the cabinet with some hangers. And then when I'm ready to remove it, I can just simply remove it this way, and now my side panel's off. Hmm. I'll do the same thing to the other side. Absolutely. The order doesn't matter. I just have my preference to leaving the last one on at the top. And again, simply just reach, pull. You can see the gasket here, ground provisions on the bottom. Every panel on the TS has ground studs or provisions on it. So Lee, I want to show you a couple things about this cabinet. These are the things, these little hangers allowed me to put that panel up there. And they're just a press fit. And so when they put on like that, it allows us to be a one person job just to hang my panel so that it's safe and it's easy. And the other thing that you noticed that picked up on the grounding was on these sidewall brackets. They actually have sharp metal teeth, and that's what causes the ground back from every external panel back to the frame. Those side panels came off pretty quickly. What about the back panel? Back panel is really easy too. And what we have are two fasteners here. And these are Torx fasteners. I take these out. And unlike other designs, I don't have to lay the cabinet down to take this panel out. Everything's done just like this. And there's actually safety features built into these brackets, so not until I'm ready to remove the panel do I lift these up. And I'm going to step in front to remove this panel. It simply slides out. Lift the panel out of the way. And now I can take it to, do, to mount my controls. That's as simple as it is to get this panel in and out. Now, Steve, if we were using a conventional panel that's in a conventional cabinet that's all welded together, um, I think it'd be a, a little heavier, and I think the, uh, the, 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 uh, pa the panels itself would be have a little bit thicker gauge steel because you're actually making co uh, connections to it. Um, what's the difference in those two styles? Well, the standard panel from a competitor, for example, is, is painted first of all, so there's a lot of prep work to work with that panel first. And then secondly, just getting it out. Typical 
a user of another competitor cabinet would lay the cabinet down and then they would have to hoist it out. So they'd have to get a crane or a hoist or some other workers and then they'd physically lift that panel out. So there's a lot of uh, time and labor involved in doing that where we just simply slid ours out. And then the benefit here to what's called a, a hot dip galvanizer, many people will call it zinc plated, but there's a difference. There's no, there's no prep. Once you put a component on here, it's instantly grounded. It gives you better corrosion resistance. And the third thing is increased shielding effectiveness just because of the zinc coating. Steve, we've got to, obviously for a controls cabinet, you've got a, a lot of wiring and cables coming in. Um, how do you manage those in a modular cabinet like this? Easiest thing with the modular cabinet is a cable plate system that's in the base that I'll show you, as opposed to just a solid pan. So what I'll do first of all is I'll remove the mounting panel slide rails because we don't need these now. This is only for the removal and installation of the panel. I can get these out of the way. This opens up a greater area in the bottom to work with my cables. And I can get turnkey solutions as accessories to put in here, but the standard design is set up so that if I want to remove these plates, or just open them up. I remove these small fasteners and this just simply slides up like that. I bring my wires and cables through there and we can put accessories on the bottom to manage those cables and provide strain relief but it can be that simple and then we line that with gasket that's already provided with every cabinet. I can also take these plates and rearrange them. I can make cutouts in them or I can order accessories that are already set up for certain types of cable management. Quite often you want to mount equipment inside these things. I understand it's pretty easy to get a system chassis to slide into it to actually accomplish that. Could you show us how that happens? Sure, I've got a couple of them with me here. These are the system chassis and the unique shape of the TS8 frame allows us to have both an inner level and an outer level. So these chassis will accommodate that. And to put them in, you literally just slide them into the whole pattern and they just drop into place just like that. And then I can put one on for the inner level, same process, right into place and if I want to secure them with a self-tapping screw, I'm done. And like you said, you can mount all kinds of climate control or other controls to those chassis. How much weight can you accommodate with one of these things? It really depends on the, the length of the rail, but a rail like that could be a couple hundred pounds. Really? Interesting. Is there a limit to how much the cabinet can hold? We have tested the cabinet to over 3,000 pounds of load in just the frame. That's without any of the other panels on the outside, just what the frame alone will support. That's a pretty impressive uh, load that this thing can handle. Why can it handle so much? It's a good question. One of the unique things that Rotol does is roll form steel. So we're taking a single piece of steel. The TS8 vertical profile, as you can see here, has been folded 16 times laser welded down the middle and when you do that you create a closed channel. The closed channel is what it affords incredible strength in a lightweight pr uh, profile and so this is the frame structure of a TS8 that gives us the vertical profiles that are extremely strong. We have one bay here. What if I want to add another one? What do I do? Great question Lee. What the, one of the beauty of the modular product is the ability to bay multiple cabinets together. Many more cabinets you could with just a welded box. So what lends itself to that in the TS8 frame is that this is symmetrical, not only front to back, but the sides. If we turn it and look at the side profile, this is identical all the way around. So this allows us to bay cabinet side to side, front to back, and even stack them top to bottom. So how would a second cabinet attach here? Well, what we do is in every TS8, you get a hardware bag, and in that hardware bag is some gasket. That's for the environmental seal. Once you apply the gasket, you push the cabinets together, put some bang hardware in there, and you can do that for as long as you want to go with enclosures. Well, I notice that all these inner surfaces are painted. I'm kind of curious how you do that. <laughs> well, Lee, what we do with this frame is, since it's closed channel, that is the, the challenge. How do you paint inside of that? So we use a very unique uh, paint process. So as it goes through the pretreatment process, it's an eight-stage cleaning and prep process, which includes a nano coating today. And then it goes into the primer bath. Our primer bath is 100,000 gallons of primer paint, and the tank, we completely submerge the product into the uh, bath. And then it's electrostatic, so we completely coat the inside and the outside, and then it goes through a powder coat process where it gets powder coated and then back into the oven. So it, this cabinet has a three-stage uh, paint process that nobody else uses in our industry. 
Now, Steve, this TS-8 is not a shielded cabinet, but I did want to talk a little bit about the grounding on it. Okay. Uh, obviously, we're not in an anechoic chamber, and I don't have an RF generator, but um, nevertheless, because the grounding is actually pretty good on this thing, I wanted to show, take a couple of ohm meter readings and just show what we find, like from the eyelet to the hinge on the door, we get like zero ohms, and uh, even to the rail on the door, even though we've got uh, the door open and uh, we've got a polyurethane gasket on the door, if this was shut, the, the grounding would actually still be pretty good. We'll also see that there's no special grounding straps and there's no special bus bars installed in this thing, but um, what actually would be the, the uh, decrease in field strength if we could close the door and had electronics in this thing from the outside to the inside? Well, with the TSA, because of the grounding that's built into it, we take the standard level of a protection from an enclosure and add 20 decibels. So that would reduce your strength from, let's say, 10 to 1. So anything that's outside would be reduced by, uh, you would only have one-tenth of what gets into the cabinet. That's great. That's pretty good. That's the way it's set up. Our customers don't have to use a bunch of ground straps and hardware. The standard TSA is designed like that right off the factory floor. We've been talking about industrial cabinets that typically have industrial controls in them. But increasingly, in industrial settings, you find electronic instruments that sit in 19-inch racks. But I understand there's a way to accommodate those even in an industrial control cabinet. Can you tell us about that a little bit, Steve? Sure, that's one of the benefits of a modular frame-based system because it allows you to create multiple layers or levels within that same cabinet. So one of the examples that we have today of course Ethernet the plant floor and we have a swing frame here. So this is a full height swing frame. You can also get them in partial sizes and it allows you to, to mount your 19 inch rack mount equipment and then just swing it out of the way to either the connectors or wires on the back and still hit your panel mounted devices on the mounting panel. How many instruments can you accommodate in a frame like that? Well, this is probably along the line of a 42U swing frame, so 42 components that would be 1.75 inches in height, so quite a number. Hmm. That's quite an interesting feature, and I had no idea there was so much technology involved in an industrial cabinet. So thanks to that, Steve, and um, where can our viewers go to get more information about all these things? Viewers can go to our website for more information. And for more videos just like this one, Go to designworldonline.com.